All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over Pinterest audience insights and Pinterest analytics. So as you're building your Pinterest profile, you're gaining more followers, you're getting more clicks, more saves, everything like that. So you're really just trying to grow your engagement and grow your following on Pinterest. One of the things that's going to become very helpful is the analytics drop down here. So you first have to make sure you have a business profile on Pinterest. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. And you also need to confirm your website on Pinterest. So we have tutorials on our channel already for both of those things. Very simple process. You could just Google how to confirm your website. Pinterest has a whole help article that will help regardless of what web host you're using or whether you're using WordPress or Blogger or anything like that. So what we're going to do first is under the analytics drop down, you can see there's overview, profile, people you reach, website, and audience insights. So I'm going to start with audience insights here. It's early access, so I'm not 100% sure if everyone has access to this yet or if it's just full release and it's just the, the beginning stages of what they're going to be showing to people. So now we're looking at audience insights for our website, Beachfront Decor, and the Pinterest profile for it. So here's our website here. Uh, we come back over to the audience insights. You can see you can choose all Pinterest users, just your profile, and you can compare your profile to all Pinterest users. Um, under the audience one, you could choose either your total audience or your engaged audience. So total audience is anybody who has seen or engaged with your pins in the last 30 days. Engaged audience is obviously just people who have engaged with your pins. So there's a few different things to look at here. Um, so under categories and interests, they're gonna show what are the most popular categories and interests for your audience. So for me, it's design, architecture, gardening, home decor, DIY and crafts, event planning. And the affinity here is gonna show how much, how popular these categories are for your audience compared to just everybody else on Pinterest. And you can see the percentage of your audience that falls into these categories. So obviously for beachfront decor, it's gonna be a lot of home decor and DIY and crafts. So 90% of our audience, over 90% of our audience for both of them. Um, but the affinity will show that design, so design architecture, that people are more interested in those categories, our followers are, uh, compared to every uh, everybody else on Pinterest. So if we put out pins related to design, architecture, gardening, obviously home decor, DIY and crafts, event planning, there are things that our audience is going to be interested in more than everybody else on Pinterest. So design interests, if you click over here, you could see architecture interests, what people are interested in. So the affinity is the best way to look at this because you could see residential architecture is really where people are interested. So, you know, beach living room inspiration, things like that, beach bedroom inspiration. Um, looking at architecture, you could look at home design, you could look at, you know, living room design, different things like that. Um, same with design over here. So it's gonna say web and app design. If we look at affinity, these really aren't too related to what we're doing. So it's not the best for design interests. Um, so maybe this will get better over time. Under gardening, um, you can just see some of the different things that people are interested in. So we have a lot of backyard furniture on ours. So that's probably why we have a big gardening interest um, because we have a lot of backyard designs, um, different types of furniture that go well in your backyard. Um, so our total audience, it's not a huge percentage, but you can see people are interested in backyard design. So it's something, you know, beach themed backyard designs would probably be something that would work well for our audience. Home decor. So this is really where you get the best. So under affinity, home decor style, farmhouse decor. So that's something where under beachfront decor, we could add more farmhouse beach type pins, um, basket and crate, kitchen fixtures, console tables. So these, there's a lot of opportunities here for things. And what you want to look at is affinity and the percentage of category audience. So basket and crate is something that people are really interested in. So one thing we could do is something like beach baskets and start adding a ton of wicker baskets and ton of beach themed and coastal themed baskets to that board. And people would probably be very interested in that. So that's a big opportunity for me. So we go through all these, but I'm going to scroll down a little bit. So looking at age and gender, so you can see which ages and genders are the most popular for my audience. So really it's going to be 25 to 54, um, really 25 and up. Usually when I target ads, I go 25 and up. So there's different ways to look at this and I'll show you when we look at compare in a little bit. So under locations, it's going to sh show the top metro areas. One thing you're going to see is kind of the most populated metro areas tend to be here. So we're really related to the beach. So Los Angeles, New York, Dallas, Fort Worth, I wouldn't really consider New York and Dallas, Fort Worth, necessarily beach towns at all. Chicago, not at all. Atlanta, not at all. So that's not very helpful. Orlando, Daytona Beach, obviously. Tampa, St. Pete. Um, Los Angeles, I would consider. 
Um, so under device, you could see what devices people are using uh, to access this. So that could be helpful. You know, if you're if you most people are accessing yours through iPhone, Android mobile and your website isn't mobile friendly, then that's something that you can really look at and improve. So one thing I like to see is you can go to your engaged audience as well, and it's going to change a little bit. See what people are engaging with. So let's go to home decor again. We'll see what people are engaging. So home accessories, room decor. Again, we'll look at affinity, home decor style, beach house decor. So kind of all that makes sense. Home decor basket. So that's really the big thing that I've kind of taken away from this is basket and crate and home decor. People are really interested in those types of things with my audience. So that's something I really need to work on. Now let's look at my total audience and let's compare. So now we're comparing my total audience to the Pinterest total audience. So you can see design is about double for my audience compared to Pinterest. Architecture is double. Gardening is, you know, definitely more. Home decor is definitely way more. Um, you can look at design interests. But here's one of the interesting things. So the age distribution. So 27% of Pinterest users are 18 to 24. So that's really something where I'm kind of missing out on that opportunity. Um, so that's something where I would really want to optimize and see you know what people 18 to 24 are more interested in maybe it's wedding planning um, maybe it's something like recipes maybe it's DIY projects those are some things I don't have a ton of on my boards and maybe if I add some of those things I can reach more of that 18 to 24 audience because I'm clearly missing out on a huge part of it now 35 to 54 I'm doing very well in terms of my audience is doing better than the to total audience on Pinterest so top metros you can see it's pretty similar here now one thing you can do is export the CSV file. So I did that here and you can look, it's it's not the cleanest uh, spreadsheet, but one thing that I like is scroll all the way to the bottom. So now when it comes to metros that people are interested in, the biggest markets that people are interested in, I can see, you know, I can kind of focus more on beach towns, especially if I'm running ads. So Los Angeles, I can say since that's close to the beach, Tampa, St. Pete, Orlando, Daytona. Um, keep scrolling down a little bit. Uh, so Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you can kind of see some different ideas there for markets that people are interested in, in what I'm offering and maybe some opportunities where I can improve. So San Diego, I can improve. West Palm Beach, I can improve. Um, Norfolk, Newport News, that's something where I can improve. Fort Myers. So there's some areas where maybe I want to run ads to people in those areas because they're probably buying the most beach decor. Um, my percent of audience is probably big in New York just because the population is so big. So that's Pinterest audience insights for now. Um, they're probably going to add more to this, I'd imagine. You're probably going to get better data as they keep rolling it out. Um, it's still early access, so I'm sure they're still working on a lot of the audience insights here. But there's a lot you can learn about, you know, some opportunities where you're missing, um, where things are people are very interested in something you might have to offer where you don't have the board for that yet. You don't have a ton of pins for that yet. And that's something where you can really optimize attract more people to your profile, get more engagement, get more people to follow you. So I've already found a few things for mine. I went over basket and crate. I have kind of a list of things that I need to add to my Pinterest boards now. Um, it's very, it's going to be very helpful and it will help me grow. Now, when you're trying to grow, um, when we click on analytics, there's overview, profile, people you reach, and website. So I'm going to go through them one by one. First is overview. So overview is going to show the growth or decline of your Pinterest profile, the amount of people you reach, the activity from your confirmed website. So this is our activity from beachfronttocore.com. Top pin impressions from the last 30 days from our website. Uh, so you can see what's driving saves, what's driving clicks. So what we're going to do is click on profile. So under Pinterest profile, it's going to show the amount of impressions, saves, clicks, and you can see all time results that the views that our pins get on Pinterest. So this is all the pins on our profile. So it doesn't include all the pins from beachfronttocore.com on Pinterest. It includes just the pins from our profile. And what I like here is you can see the top pin impressions from the last 30 days, what's getting clicks, what's getting saves. So for me, one of the big things is best wooden beach signs. So my most popular pin ever is a wooden beach sign pin. Um, and you can see just down here, wooden beach signs. I have 346 pins on this board compared to some of the others. It's, it's not as much as those ones. Obviously, it's about the same as Instagram feed. But wooden beach signs is driving 344 clicks about every 30 days. So that's that's a huge opportunity for me. So that's something where if I go into wooden beach signs and make sure I'm adding at least 20, 30, 50 pins per month to this board, and I'm making sure that they're unique pins, beautiful pins, going back to my website, um, going out to other merchant affiliate websites, then I can really drive way more clicks and hopefully more sales and revenue for my business. So under top pin impressions, if we go to show more, 
you're going to get a ton of ideas for what people are saving, what people are interested in, um, and ways that you can really grow some of your impressions for your pins so that you're not just pinning things that people aren't interested in. For me, the biggest thing is, you know, colorful, unique, inspirational pins are the best thing that work for me. If I'm just putting up product pins with a white background, they don't really do too well um, in terms of engagement or anything like that. So you can see wooden beach signs are big, beach decor Instagram is good. So I have a lot of different opportunities that I can find there. So now let's come back up to the top. And if I go to saves, I can also see how many saves I'm getting, um, you know, how my pins are spread across Pinterest. And what I'll say is I've seen a lot of growth, you know, in the Let's just go to the last 30 days. I've seen a lot of growth just because I've been adding a lot of pins. There's also a little bit, you know, down here because it's during New Year's and usually during holidays, everything's a little down. People aren't on social media as much, um, especially Pinterest. Uh, so you'll see there's kind of a lot of growth here. That's just from adding pins. So just kind of showing the importance of continuously adding pins every single day. Um, so we'll go to clicks as well. So it's going to show my average daily clicks. We'll go to the last 30 days is 66 clicks average daily visitors 63 so very low here uh, kind of in the 30s 40s 50 range um, but as we get up you can see it now we're above 100 from the last Sunday and one of the things I like to look at is you can see where your peaks are so Sunday Sunday Thursday's a big day Sunday Saturday so you can tell Saturday and Sunday are huge days for me a lot of people on Pinterest looking for home decor on Sundays um, so that's really when I need to add the most pins is make sure I have pins scheduled for Sunday because that's going to help me grow and get more impressions for my Pinterest profile. So the next thing is going to be people you reach. So people you reach is essentially audience insights now. So when you go here, it's going to say we've upgraded the people you reach to the audience insights report. So you can go to take me there. But one thing you can see is just from the last 30 days, the amount of people that are viewing my pins and the amount of people engaged and you can see the overall growth. So from December 30th, it says 312,000 viewers, 12,000 engaged. Now we're almost double for both, it looks like. So about double for engaged, not quite double for viewers, but 563,000 viewers, 23,000 engaged. So just the importance of adding pins. And I've said I've added a lot more pins recently for my website. So that's something that's very important for reaching people, getting more engagement, getting more impressions. Next thing we're going to go to is website. So if you have a website and you have it confirmed, you could see all the activity from your website pins on Pinterest. So one thing to look at is my website actually gets more daily impressions over a 30 day period pins directly from my website. than let's go back to impressions here than just my Pinterest profile in general. So we're looking at last 30 days. So my average daily impressions for my Pinterest profile is 25,000. And if we come back to my website, it's over 30,000. That's because people come to my website, they'll save pins directly from my website and put them on their own Pinterest boards. So that's one of the big things you can see is how well your pins are performing for your own website. And you want this to keep growing because it's gonna keep driving clicks back to your website. So you can just see clicks. So we're averaging about 90 clicks back to our website, you know, since January 15th to January 28th. So you've seen a lot of growth as well up here. So again, just from adding pins, um, you can see Saturdays and Sundays at pretty much peaks. So that's why it's always important for me to add more pins on Saturdays and Sundays. So there's a lot to learn when you're going through your audience insights and analytics for how to grow your audience. So if you have any questions about any of these things, um, you can leave them in the comments section. I highly recommend looking at your audience insights report, seeing where you have some opportunities, making sure you're consistently adding pins to Pinterest. Um, I've gone over it in the past, but I use Tailwind. It's tailwind.com. Uh, that's how I schedule all my pins. You can create easy schedules. You can quickly upload a lot of different pins for different categories. And you just want to keep building out your profile because as you see growth, you're going to see growth for your website. You're going to see growth for your Pinterest profile. And all that really helps you drive more revenue for your business. So if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching our video today and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.